Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Welcome again, brothers and sisters, to the next episode in the series of Marriage and Divorce. With myself is Sheikh Haytham Al Haddad, who is currently residing in the UK and is on the board of the Islamic Sharia Council of Britain and is also the founding member of the website www.islam21c.com. In our previous episode, we started to speak about the rights of the husband over the wife and we concluded on the issue of how the wife should make herself available to the husband. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We want to move on to the next right that the husband has over his wife and specifically the fact that she as the wife should not let anyone into her house or into his house whom he might dislike. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulillah. This is the third right. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said clearly to women that and part of the right of your husbands over you that you don't admit anyone in his house without his permission. It is clearly mentioned in a number of authentic hadith. One of them is the hadith of Abi Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu that he said that the Prophet sallallahu said it is not permitted for a woman to fast when her husband is present without his permission or to admit anyone into his house without his permission and whatever she spends in charity of his wealth without his consent. This is narrated in Sahih al-Bukhari and Sahih muslim And there are a number of hadith to that effect. So it is clear. And there is a story when Abu Sufyan came, Abu Sufyan, he became Muslim and he became one of the companions of the Prophet sallallahu When he came to Medina, he went to see his daughter, the wife of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Umm Habiba Ramla bin to Abi Sufyan, one of the wives of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So he went to visit her. When he entered the house, she pulled out the carpet or something like this. She pulled it out, not to step over it. So he said, oh, ya bunayya, ya bunayya, araghibti bihi anni am raghibti bi anhu. Yani you want to honor me that I step on something very simple and cheap like this, or you honor it. You don't want me to step over it. So she said, I can't do this unless I take permission from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because he took upon us not to let anyone to enter the house or step over the bed or the carpet of the wife except with the permission of the husband, okay? So she said that the Prophet Sallallahu took upon us that we don't allow anyone without the permission of the husband to step over the carpet of the husband. So this is an incident. Now, see, as I said, it is part of the regulations. It is part of the framework. It doesn't mean that the husband will abuse his power. Don't let this person to visit you. Don't let your parents visit you. Don't let this woman to visit you. Don't let this and that. If he does this, life will become difficult. And this is not the, the wisdom behind it anyway. And this is not the wisdom behind it. But he has the right. Now again, it is a contract between the husband and the wife. The wife should understand these things. And by the way, again, part of the problems that take place between husbands and wives is ignorance of Islamic guidance. Why? Because the wife in many cases might say, well, I never expected this. Why didn't you expect this? Because she didn't know. And that's why we say, as the Prophet ﷺ said, the cure for the ill person or for the ignorant person is to ask. And Allah Jalla wa'ala says, فَسَلُوا أَهْلَ ذِكْرِ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ Ask the people of knowledge if you know not. So they should learn. Both men and women, they should learn what are their expectations, what are their rights, what is the framework, what are the duties, responsibilities, etc., etc. So this person and this person get into the contract with mutual understanding of what this contract entails.
In fact, if I may say something, there is a very interesting hadith. It is a weak hadith anyway. Not a very strong hadith, but very interesting. A lady came to the Prophet ﷺ and said, Ya Rasulullah, what is the right of the husband over his wife? I want to know it before I get married. I'm a bit old and I want to know. If I can do it, I will get married. If I can't, I will not do it. So the Prophet ﷺ said, first of all, the Prophet ﷺ said that when he asks you for his right, you have to attend his need. Then the Prophet ﷺ said that you don't allow anyone to enter his house without his permission. Then thirdly, the Prophet ﷺ said, you don't fast without the permission of your husband. If you do so, you will just be hungry, thirsty, with no reward. Okay? And you will not, and you are not allowed to leave his house without his permission. So the lady said, I can't do this. I don't want to get married. Yeah? It is a weak hadith. The meaning of it is authentic. The meaning of it is correct. But this shows exactly what we are talking about. And I was happy to see this hadith. Although it is weak, it doesn't mean that it is fabricated. Weak means maybe some elements were not accurately reported. You can still take reported. the meaning. You can still take the meaning. You can still take the story. And I was so happy to see this hadith because of the story. Because I used to say that marriage is a contract. If you need to know your rights, your duties, the responsibilities, etc. If you are able to do it, just go ahead. If you feel that you won't be able to do it, just leave it. Just leave it. Don't get into the marriage and then after some time you say, I can't. Similarly, we say to husbands, I always say this to brothers. When you want to get married, you should be able to maintain her. After some time, don't say, well, I can't maintain her. This is her right. And if you don't fulfill that right, she has the right to ask for divorce. And this is a big responsibility. This is a big responsibility. Which we will get on to, inshallah. Yes. Inshallah. One question I had, because marriage is such an important issue, is it a recommendation you would say, for example, in terms of advice that anyone conducting the nikah should mention these rights at the time? Oh, yes, yes. Wallahi, this is a very good point. Jazakallah khair. This is part of the educational process. Because obviously the brothers and sisters who are getting married, for whatever reason, they might not have heard it, or they yes. might not have heard yeah. all of them. This is a very good point, and this is one of, the, one of the recipes of fixing the marriage, or one of the tools that help us to live amicably. And yeah? it would even prevent With a lot each of things from happening. And it will prevent many things. This is, wallahi, a very good point, because many of the problems that take place between husbands and wives are due to ignorance. Lack of understanding. Lack of understanding. Some problems are due to abuse of power. And by the way, abuse of power sometimes is due to ignorance as well. Because when the husband, for example, when the husband feels that it is his right yeah, to prevent her from hosting anyone in his house, he might abuse this power and he says, well, this is my right. And when he is told, yeah, that, Akhi, this is a framework, but this is not treating her in kindness. It doesn't mean this. You are abusing your power. He said, is it? Yes, you are abusing your power. You are not giving her her okay. right. And you are not giving her her right, so don't do it. So if that was uh, clarified and both parties are educated, then a number of problems will be less, inshallah. So now we understand that the wife should not allow anyone into the house of the husband without his permission. Now some people would say, but what about her father, for example, or the rest of her family? Yes, there are a number of reports by some of the companions that they say, even your father is not allowed to visit you without the permission of your husband. See, as we said, the highest right of a person over another person is the right of the husband over his wife. Now, again, having said that, it doesn't mean the husband will abuse his right. Okay? And he will stop her from communicating with her parents. 
stop her from maintaining the rights of kinship. No, this is totally haram for him to do this. But see, let us understand the dynamic. Because understanding the dynamic will help us to understand the philosophy, the Islamic philosophy with regards to marriage and divorce. And it will help us also to fix the problems. Now, there is a husband who is abusing his right. It is haram on him. We agree. It is haram on him. Now, what shall the wife do? We mentioned earlier that if the husband says to do anything which is haram, then the wife doesn't have to do it. Is this in the same issue? No, no. What I mean, what I mean is the husband is abusing his right. And he said, I don't want you to receive your parents. You go visit them. I don't want them in my house. Now, he is committing a sin because this is against what? Ishra bil ma'roof. We have to make it clear. You don't deal with a person you love and you want to continue in living in kindness with her. Yes? And you stop her from receiving her Parents family. out of anyone, yeah. This is crazy. This is crazy. Me, as a father, if, for example, in the future, my daughter wants to get married and I can't visit her, this is too much. This is too much. And this person will be a father in the future. Exactly. So he should also imagine what will happen to him, how he will be treated by his son-in-law as well. Okay? Inshallah, yes. we will continue right after the break, inshallah. Brothers and sisters, please return to this discussion between myself and our Sheikh Khatam al-Haddad. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. <laughs> Most countries of the world ban bullying. They fight it in their schools and universities. A lot of us are being bullied differently every single day. Some come up to us and say, do this. While others say, don't you dare. Some say this is halal. While others say, nope, this is haram. Are you confused? Do you feel lost? Join me in Umdat al-Ahkam where, with the grace of Allah, we will learn the proper knowledge from the Qur'an and from the Sunnah, which would help stop this kind of bullying. Join Asim Al-Hakim in Umdatul Ahkam, next on Peace TV. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back, brothers and sisters, to this discussion where we are discussing the rights the husband has over the wife. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi. We were discussing the issue of how the wife needs to ask permission from the husband before letting anyone into his house. Yes. So we were saying that the husband should not abuse this right and he might be sinful. Okay? In many cases, he's sinful. Now, because we want to explain the dynamic. Now, what shall the wife do? So, okay. let, the us, father is outside. Let, us take, let us take a practical situation. Yeah, practical situation. The wife rang her husband and said, my parents want to visit me tonight. A typical situation. He said, no. Then she should approach him. Oh, my dear husband, blah, blah, etc. Texting him, is there any reason? See, again, we don't want to take life as a rigid relationship between both sides. And as I always say, we will talk in depth about this point. That if there is an obedient wife, pleasing wife to her husband, in most circumstances, the husband's will be like obedient husbands to their wives. Very true. Let us not imagine an odd situation and use that situation as the standard and judge every single incident or the rulings of Sharia based on that single incident, which is an odd incident. So, if there is a good relationship between both, the husband will not... He doesn't... In fact, he will... Like her parents. He will soften towards his wife. He will be soft to his wife and he will feel, as I mentioned it in one of the episodes, that her 
parents are the grandparents of his children. Of course. So he will have good relationship with them. This is in normal circumstances. And again, if the wife is respecting him, respecting his parents, honoring his parents, he will honor her parents as well. Yeah? If she welcomes his parents whenever they want to come, he will also welcome her parents whenever they want to come. And as I said to my wife, as I always encourage people that the trust between both parties should be to the level, the trust, the love, the respect, and the mutual understanding of the nature of the relationship between both parties is that the, these guidelines and framework is not in your picture at all. It is not in your life at all. For example, if I have a mutual understanding with my wife and respect and love, etc., and understanding that we want to nourish our children based on these values as well, then my wife, my wife, I gave her open permission to visit her parents. I gave her an open permission to receive anyone in the house. She knows what I like, and she knows, okay, what I dislike. And you trust her decision? And I trust her decision, I, and I don't need to investigate who visited you today. Who, why, when? What? Yes. Okay, this is not the real life that we are looking for. This is not, as Allah said, treat them in kindness. But what this framework is doing is to put guidelines to prevent any possible dispute. And if there is a dispute, we can come, back to... We come back to this stand. Or if there is an abuse, yeah, an abuse. Like if I come to my wife, every time I come, I just want to go home, have some rest. Every day I go. One of her family members is in the house. One time her mother, one time her father, one time her brother, one time her auntie, one time her uh, cousin, one time... One... I want to go home to have rest, to spend some quality time with my wife. Yeah? She wants this from me as well. If I'm not finding this in my house with my wife, then I will say to her, oh, listen. Do you know that you are not allowed to let anyone enter my house without my permission? See, the abuse of right leads to what? To restrictions. And this is what we want our brothers and sisters to understand in terms of the nature of the relationship, the dynamic of a good relationship in the family. So this is what I'm saying, why Islam puts these elements and these guidelines. I think generally, the more people don't abuse these rights, the more relaxed everything will be. That is right. For example, you know, in traffic law, you know, in traffic law, if people don't go into car crashes and accidents, then maybe there is no need for red lights and green lights and these traffic lights, yeah? Because there is no problem in the first place. But when there is a possibility of many problems. We have to put what? Signs, restrictions, etc., etc. Okay? This is the dynamic and this is the philosophy of all of fit and this is how we should understand it. Now, we spoke specifically about people entering the house. What about things that might seem minor, but it happens? For example, the postman comes or delivery comes to the address. Is this part of the same condition? Yeah, this is a good point. Uh, this is a very good point. See, in modern life, the husband should give his wife, uh, again, certain guidelines that she should have some freedom to judge and to act and to decide. Okay? So, he should not put it as if she is really in prison. And before you take any decision, you have to call me in order to take my permission. Uh, this is, I don't think this is a treatment in kindness at all. So it is up to both of them to decide.
And again, as I always say, that if you put so many restrictions on your wife, at one point, she will break down. And then don't, don't argue, don't complain, yeah? Don't say, well, there was nothing wrong. No, things were accumulating, but you were unaware of them. And um, as we are talking about these things, I always give the following example of a cup and water dripping into the cup, yeah? The cup is not a glass cup, not a transparent. So you look at the cup from this side and water is dripping there. One dot, two dots, yeah? So it is about to be full. But now you, because there is no transparency between both sides, you don't see the, the, level, rising. the level of water, the level of restoration. You don't see it. Then all of a sudden, one drop makes it spill. Yeah? Spill over and... Or if the cup is weak, maybe one drop will damage the cup and water will spill everywhere. Yes? You might say, what happened as a husband or even as a wife? But in particular husbands. Because sometimes some husbands, they come to us and they say, the wife... All of a sudden, she doesn't want me. All of a sudden, she wants to go to her family. All of a sudden, she wants hold or divorce. I don't know what happened. Just yesterday, she told me that uh, she wants to attend the wedding of her brother. And I told her no. And then everything that blow out of proportion. Of course, he's not been seeing that the devil has been rising. He has not been seeing that the cup is being what? Filled with? water with problems. And then that was the straw that broke the camel's back, as they say. Yeah? So don't do this. And make sure that if there are drops, make sure that you look at the cup to know. So make sure that there is what a level of transparency. That's very and by the way, the wife or even the husband, okay? Me and my wife should have a level of transparency. My dear wife, I'm not happy with this attitude. Okay. A bit of communication. Or, yes. Openness. Okay. It, it's been going on in my chest. I have to tell you. Okay. I'm not happy. Please. And also, each party, yeah, each party should see the situation with the other side. Yeah. Even if the other side, his nature, her nature, cannot open up easily. I should try to see her level of happiness a level of frustration. And if I am checking that continuously, and I am making sure as well that the cup yeah, is empty. So if I made something wrong, or if I committed something wrong with her, or I upset her, so a few drops went into the cup. Try and rectify it. Try to rectify it in order those drops come out. So the cup will remain what? empty yeah and then there will be no point that comes and then wow what happened i never expected this reaction from her no no no, no. she is exaggerating no akhi. she is not exaggerating but you did not understand her in the first place of course same thing with the wife as well when she treats her husband i think now we've I think we've mentioned this quite a lot in terms of the, the, the right over the husband has over the wife, in terms of her not letting anyone into the house without his permission. So, yeah. inshallah, we move on to the next point in the next episode. Inshallah. Brothers and sisters, please return to us in the next episode where we shall talk about the right the husband has over the wife in terms of her leaving the house without his permission. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. زواج مبارك مبارك النكاح من سنتي